Well, I didn't expect that to happen. I mean, Boxing Day, you would have thought, ah, nice late Christmas present from the tune. And this, this goes and happens. Fourth home defeat, this time at the hands of Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, nice headed goal in by Glenn Leuven, of all people. I think it's his first goal since 2012. And Sheffield Wednesday leave with the whole three points. Another away win for Sheffield Wednesday. And the only positive note is that I didn't get to watch it there in person. So, all in all... It was a bit of a shocking performance, Newcastle tonight, wasn't it? Anyway, if you don't know me by now, Forty, aka Ford Have Mercy, and um, I still can't believe we actually lost to Sheffield Wednesday. I mean, not a bad team. In fact, out of all the teams that we've lost to over this season, it's probably the ones that I would actually say, you know what, I'll take that one because around about the playoff positions, um, doing okay, got. A, Good, decent lineup anyway. So I'd actually take that one on the chin. The other ones, Fulham, Huddersfield, Wolves, Blackburn. Yeah, all of those ones. You kind of think to yourself, we should be beating those sort of teams, whether it's home or away. But yeah, fourth home defeat of the season. And then you've got to question some of the tactics as well. Anyway, we'll get into that shortly. So we lined up quite strong. Darlow in goal, who definitely was the man of the match, absolutely heroic. And Lee Lord, if you're watching, the conversation we had about, you know, Darlow etching towards getting there, towards the given status, I'm talking about Shea given status. But yeah, he proved it tonight because that guy is phenomenal. Obviously conceded, but easy man of the match. And some of the saves he pulled out were worldy esque, you know. Just the way he's bouncing around the area, man, like he's made of elastic. It's crazy. And the double save he pulled away, pulled out from, uh, what's it, Forestieri and Fletcher. Unbelievable. You know, if he was in the Premier League playing for a Premier League team, like it was De Gea or something like that, we'd be talking about him for years. But yeah, Darlow, fair play to you, man. Obviously, I'm lucky with the goal. Still made a fantastic save from Leeds. And obviously, Lugans was there on hand to score, but... All in all, had an absolutely worldly performance and it's unlucky for him not to come out on the winning side. So, he was in goal. Back four of Anita, Lascelles, Kieran Clark and Dummett. Pretty straightforward. We know that's going to happen. Uh, although, I did put out on Twitter today that it might be worth putting Anita into the centre and midfield. Maybe he would have worked better than, obviously, Colback and Hayden. But, you know, hindsight is a wonderful thing and all that. And then moving into midfield, as I said before, we had those two in the centre, which means we had Richie on one side and Goofred on the other side. Now, those two need to get forward a lot more. And this is the reason why. Obviously, we were without Shelby, and it just showed so badly how much we miss it. Not just because in terms of his creativity, but the way that we can just rely on him to get make something out of nothing. And, and, and take the, the game by the scruff of the neck, you know, whether it be shouted at players who get on with their job or obviously he gets on with his job. Because sometimes you just watch him for like five or ten minutes and you can see his frustrations at other people's passes, not just himself, but other people's performances. And you've got to say to yourself, you know what, he's a leader. Not a natural born one, but he's a leader in terms of he'll just take the game by the scruff of the neck and make things happen. Don't agree with what he does and obviously what he's done to get those five match man but at the same time you can see the reason why we need him so badly so this is the reason why we needed the likes of Richie and Goufran to step up and for me Richie obviously had the, the chance and uh, the debatable penalty uh, but apart from that I didn't really see much from him Goufran obviously got subbed off didn't see much from him either and we really needed those two to step up alongside Diaby and obviously Diaby's had a fantastic run of four against Burton and Wigan really needed him to step up in this game as well but obviously he didn't deliver and up top Gale fantastic chance in the first half obviously hit the bar well saved by Westwood I think got a fingertip to it but again if he doesn't get a service then he's no good to us really is he regardless if he scored 17 goals or not Sheffield Wednesday on the other hand well I told you obviously they knew as well Newcastle United that the main players were Fletcher 
cause a hell of a handful for us in Forestieri. Again, this is the reason why we wanted to sign him. Lucky we didn't sign him as well. So unlucky that we didn't because he was causing us endless amount of trouble. And you know what? The away leg is going to be even worse. Even worse if we don't get back our ideas up. Because obviously we'll have Shelby back by then. But even with Shelby inside, teams like that, who can really test us. Because they've got the runnings of us. They didn't nick it. You know, they fully deserved it. And if you look into the first half, which we'll get into right now, we'll have a couple of chances that we had. Gale, obviously hitting the bar. Kieran Clark, header from a corner. They're okay chances, yeah. But again, we didn't put them away. We're not clinical like that against big teams. We have been before, but we need to be now. Because again, this is towards the starting of the business end of the season. You know, January will make some transfers. After that, we'll see what's really good because we can't got no excuses now I think it's like 23 games played 23 more to go so pretty much halfway stage now so now is the time where the players even the fringe players need to pull their socks up and earn that wage anyway that was a Newcastle United chances so Sheffield Wednesday chances especially in the first half best of off probably fell to Fletcher of course and they obviously Forest area in the save move Great double save by um, Carl Darlow to keep us in it. And um, yeah, obviously, both teams went into half time, nil nil, just about. Second half comes about. Another great opportunity for us. <coughs> and obviously, another great opportunity for them as well. I think theirs was probably the better of the two. Fletcher, I think it was again, pretty much point black save. God knows how Carl Darlow has to save it. Just reaction save pushed it wide and that was the start of things to come and then I think it was like four minutes later a corner ball came in headed across by Lee I think it was or Lee's one of the two great save by Darlow and then Forrest Yeri was there just to head it back across to Lubins into the back of the net poor defended by us I don't know who was supposed to be Mark Forrest Yeri and Lubins for that matter but yeah they won nil to the good here's the thing there we need to kind of question after that what do we do do we react straight away because again it's around about the 60 odd minute mark or 75th minute mark I don't know one of those two that we really needed to make a statement but I think we still left it too late we made changes yes we brought an Atsu who looks lively yes we brought a Mitro there were one or two half chances and then we obviously brought on Perez but again A do we make it too late I think so in my opinion and then B, it just goes to show who we can bring on, really, because they didn't really change the game and get us an equaliser. I, I think we just, with the whole Shelby thing, we knew that he was going to be facing timeout. And obviously, we know he's still got four games to, to serve, so we need an alternative option. I've been saying this for time now. We need another way to, to beat players and to beat teams. It's no longer we can just rely on Shelby because we, even with Shelby in the team, teams are going to suss out that a lot of the time. Balls go through him. So if we just mark him out of the game, it'll pretty much be a game like this. So, anyway, three points dropped. Brighton to play tomorrow against QPR. Brighton fans already piping up like, oh, we're going to retake first position. Listen, you still got to go to QPR. I know we stuffed them. You still got to go to QPR and beat them. Who knows what, what might not happen. Or might happen and obviously you're ready now on the tails for second or even first place so I know James from Reading Away Days will be very happy about this if you're watching this video as well uh, you know what I'm not that bothered about it I am bothered about it obviously but at the same time as I said 23 more games to go lost to a team that's there or thereabouts around the playoff position so it's not a team that should be just smashing up I said it'd be a tough game, and it was. Not in the forest next. See what happens. No Shelby, no Lansbury. Interesting. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I'm smiling after a loss. What's going on around? Must be too festive. <laughs> but anyway, you know what to do by now. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, it's one of those ones. You know. We'll still move on to the next game. We're still top of the league temporarily. Um, and yeah, speak to you all soon, keep tuned, and obviously look after us.
and hopefully you had a good Christmas. Peace.